Here to beat some sense into nonsense, this is Art Explains. I right, roll the intro. If you're like me, you've probably been outside where you might have encountered a bee. The word bee actually refers to some 20,000 species of bees, including the bumble, sweat, honey, and Africanized varieties. Some lesser known species of bees include mason, carpenter, and mining. With names like that, it's easy to understand where the term busy as a bee came from. <laughs> Thank you. There's also the polyester bee, which apparently weaves little baskets out of polymers for its eggs. Aww. Anyway, bees are very diverse, but you should never confuse the term bee with the term wasp. Wasp is an umbrella term that refers to several different species of yellow jackets and hornets. And compared to bees, wasps are just... terrible. Many types of wasps are parasitic, and many lay their eggs inside of other living critters. And, infamously, they have a particularly nasty habit of stinging. There are bees that sting as well, but they tend to be a lot less vicious about it. It's almost as if wasps enjoy being evil. Although, following the trail of evolution backwards seems to indicate that bees share a common ancestor with the wasp, which was much more wasp-like. This seems to indicate that somewhere along the evolutionary path, bees switched from eating insects and other critters to collecting nectar. So maybe we can call bees sort of like the redeemed version of wasps, switching over to the good side. Wasps and bees can be kind of hard to tell apart, especially from a distance, which is why I propose we put wigs on all of the bees to tell them apart. But regardless of whether you're dealing with a bee or a wasp, if it begins to headbutt you, pay attention. Those headbutts are its warning that it's about to sting you, and you should probably leave the area. Although honestly, if any animal starts to headbutt you, you should, you know, consider skedaddling. So the next time someone yells, ah, it's a bee, double check, it might be a wasp. And in which case you should tell them, nah, man, that's a wasp, and then run, run forever. Now let's talk about some positive aspects of bees. Most people, I imagine, when they think of the positive things about bees, think of two things, honey and pollination. Not all bees make honey, but they should, because it's delicious. Honey is such a commodity for the human race that beekeeping has been a thing for over 4,500 years, and people were collecting wild honey much further back than that, by some accounts up to 15,000 years ago. And because honey doesn't spoil easily, theoretically, if those people had stored the honey correctly, we could still eat it today. Honey has antibacterial properties that doesn't give it immortal shelf life, but it is quite impressive. In fact, some researchers say that they found honey in Egyptian tombs that was still palatable. You know, mummy honey. And speaking of mummies, don't ever give honey to a baby. Nutritionists recommend waiting until a child is at least two years old before giving them any honey because of the risk of botulism. Do we have any jokes about botulism? No? Moving on. Pollination, specifically biotic pollination, is a process by which a vector, in this case a bee, transfers pollen from one plant to another. It's a lot more complicated than that, with all kinds of reproductive things going on, but essentially a bumblebee bumbles from flower to flower and uh, plays baby maker for the blueberries. And speaking of buzzing from plant to plant, there's a prevalent myth in pop culture that says that scientists don't understand how bees fly due to something with the physics or aerodynamics or something. Yeah, no, that's just not true. There are papers published that prove otherwise. Scientists understand how bees fly. Although scientists have yet to understand how bees talk. Buzz, 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 buzz. Buzz, 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 buzz. Buzz, 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 buzz. Buzz, 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 buzz. Buzz. Yeah, no, I didn't get any of that. And unfortunately for us honey fans, recent years have brought about hard times for our little buddies. Buzzies? You may have heard of something called colony collapse disorder, which is affecting a large number of bees and killing them left and right. Recent studies of this phenomenon try to explain it by combining funguses and viruses, but nobody's really sure what's going on here, except that a lot of bees are dying. Other possible factors include climate change, habitat loss, pesticide use, mites, and genetics. But whatever the case, the result is that the population is declining for feral honeybees and other pollinating species. So forget hugging trees. Hug some bees. They could use the empathy. So I hope you've learned that bees really aren't that scary. It's wasps. Wasps are scary. Bees give us fruit. Delicious, delicious fruit. Wasps sting you again and again and murder insects to lay their eggs. So, you know, 
there's a few important differences. Thanks for watching. Now get out.